Hi, my name's Linda, and I've been experimenting with sea glass for probably about two years now, and I've made uh, quite a few things with it just for my own house. And one is the mermaid over here. And what I'm working on today is um, this project with the flowers and the welcome. Some other things I've made are this, which is the first, I think probably one of the first things that I've ever made. And this, I used some leftover resin and made that. And there's the mermaid again. She's about four foot tall. One of the other first things that I made was the, um, this mermaid. And this is when I experimented with some resin and didn't turn out so good. Even though it looks good there, the resin didn't really set right. And then another thing I made was this uh, dolphin up on the wall here with all the sea glass. And I've made several other things that I have in the other rooms that I'll show you in another video. But for today, I'm gonna to be working on this which is a, something I s saw on the computer. And it's all painted, and I decided to try doing it with sea glass and my own take on it. And I'll turn it that way for now so you can see it a little better. And this is all sea glass. I put the tape here so that I could paint the welcome on it. And I'm not a painter, it didn't turn out great, but I used just regular acrylic, some old acrylic paint I had. And then I laid out the whole project with sea glass. And this is actually stained glass that I tumbled. And in another video, I'll talk more about tumbling, but in this one, I'm gonna do the resin and show you how I did that. So how I start is I take, I buy these old frames at garage sales or thrift stores. And um, what I do is I take the glass out of it, the picture out of it and the glass out of it. And then I take a uh, tweezer or something and I pull these little tabs out. I use this quick seal caulk, clear caulk and I go all the way around the edge and then I put the glass back in and I let it set overnight. And after it's set overnight, then I take tape and I put just regular um, painter's tape on the back side of it. And I didn't do it on this one yet, but I'm gonna have to as soon as I'm um, done taking all the glass off. So I just put this painter's tape here so that I could kind of make a straight welcome sign. And it still ended up crooked. Like I said, I'm not a great painter. But anyway, so after you set up exactly how, where you want it, then you have to start taking it off. And what I do is um, I just go ahead and put it right next to it exactly how I had it set up on the glass. This tumbled glass is um, things that I get from thrift stores, garage sales, and most of it is glass that um, was depression glass because a lot of the glass that you have now that you find is just painted and when you tumble it, the paint comes off. And so you end up with clear glass. But that's another thing that I've been experimenting with is using clear glass, tumbling it and painting it. But none of this is painted. This is all colored glass that's been tumbled. And a lot of it had all different textures. 
and that's why it turned out the way it is. So some of the texture comes out of it, but a lot of it stays in. And here's an example of the textured glass. I don't know if you can see that. It's real pretty. Also, what I'm using for the centers of all the flowers, what I usually use is jewelry. Um, jewelry that I found at garage sales, jewelry that I found at thrift stores, and I only pay quarter, 50 cents, a dollar. And actually all these pieces here is from one necklace that I think I picked up for a couple dollars at the thrift store. And I just took it all apart. I have a couple projects that I did Um, in my other rooms that I can show you on another video. And I can also show you how to make them. But I've been experimenting with the resin. And the first resin that I used um, just didn't set right. And I'm not sure if it was because it was old resin or if I just did something wrong because it's very sensitive to temperature. And um, so several of the first things didn't turn out that great, but if you have them set up against the wall, you don't really notice, like the one of the mermaids that I showed you and um, the one with the fish at the very beginning of this video. This seems real tedious, but you have to set it up how you want it, because once you get the resin, you really, you don't have to work real super fast, but it's good if you can. Uh, you know where you're putting it and you don't have to mess around. So um, the first resin that I had was um, some resin that somebody had given me. And I'm not sure if it was old or what the deal was, but it was commercial like commercial grade resin, so it smelled really bad. You had to have use it outside, and um, you needed to wear a mask, and you needed good ventilation, and it just was, uh, like I said, it didn't turn out too good. So the next resin I found, um, I bought online just by reading the reviews. I got it on Amazon, and it's called Total Boat Resin. And um, I just followed the directions and it worked pretty good. This um, stained glass, I just bought some at Hobby Lobby and cut it up. And that's another thing, and I just learned how to do it on YouTube. I didn't do anything uh, special. I have no experience with stained glass at all. So anyway, now that I have this, I'll put that up a little bit. I'm going to take this tape off. Right here. And then this tape, I'm going to flip it over. Usually when I do this, I already have this done, but I, I'm going to use, use some of this tape. So even though I sealed it up with the caulk, the clear caulk, I've had problems sometimes with it leaking. So this is just an extra precaution, putting this extra tape on here so that it doesn't leak. And it comes right off after you're done, you know, after the resin's dried, it comes right off. Let's stick together. Yeah, I've ended up getting resin on the floor and resin on myself and everything else. And this is just, just helps. In case it should be. So this total boat resin that I'm going to use. Um, the instructions say it's equal parts of the resin to the hardener. 
So if you're doing it by volume, so if you want two ounces, then you use two ounces of the hardness. But if you're doing it by weight, it's uh, 100 parts to 83 parts of the hardener. So I don't know why, but I started doing it by weight, maybe because I couldn't see the measuring thing. So after that's done, you just flip it over. And uh, one of the things that you should have by you all the time is rubbing alcohol. Because if you get any of the hardener, if you get any of the hardener, the resin on you before it dries or on any parts of the frame, you can just wipe it right off with the alcohol. Or if it gets on your hands, you can use the alcohol and it seems to come right off. So I've been trying to use gloves with the resin. This uh, Total Boat resin is a total of a gallon, so it's two one-half gallons that you mix together. I cleaned the bottle off with resin, or with the rubbing alcohol, that's why it, it's kind of dripping like that. But this is the part A, and then that's the part B. And, jeez, I kind of been just guessing how much I'm gonna be needing, and after you do a few, you'll know. And so I use this scale here, and I have a table, not a tablecloth, but a bed sheet and an old towel. So I zero this out. First I turn it on, then I put the cup on, and then I push this and it zeroes it out. And so next I'm gonna use, this is the part A. And you pretty much, it'll measure it out. And I don't know, I might need almost a full cup of this. So this is, now it's at three ounces. Four, five ounces. Five ounces should be good. So then for the hardener, you put a little bit less than five ounces. And I stick it right back in this bucket. So that actually came out to 5.4. I'm probably going to have extra. And when I have extra, I uh, just use it to make other things. Oops. Okay. I always end up putting more hardener in. But anyway. So then once you have it together, you just use a spoon and you mix it. And it says mix for um, three to five minutes. I don't know if I've ever mixed it that long. A lot of times they'll say don't. I'm going to hold it over the rug here. They say uh, don't mix real hard. It gets bubbles. It's going to get bubbles regardless. So um, I use a heat gun to, they say blow the bubbles out, but really it's the, it's not so much the blowing of the heat gun. It's the hot air, when it hits the bubbles, the bu bubbles disappear. And um, I have some little resin flowers I can show you. After I finish this, it'll sh show the bubbles because I didn't use the heat gun. But it was the back of the resin flowers that I knew no one was gonna see, but you wouldn't wanna do that with your project. So you just scrape way down at the bottom and just make sure it's mixed up really well before you pour it on. And one of the mistakes that I made with the heat gun at one time was to put it on high and hold it real close and it blew the resin right onto the sides of the frame and it didn't look good. And at the time, I didn't know I could just use the rubbing alcohol to wipe that off. And so when it dried, it had resin all over the frame and it looked terrible. And once it's dried, there's no getting it off. So do anything you can to get it off before it dries. 
Now the um, other resin that someone had given me before was a commercial resin that smelled so bad and you had to use it outside, you had to wear a mask, and it was still awful. This has little, very little to no smell at all. And I've been doing it inside without a mask. Maybe I should have a mask where I see little bubbles. That's weird. So just mix it real good and then dump it on. And I think this might be too much. I don't know. So the paint that you put on, if you're going to paint something under it, make sure it's been dry for 24 hours. This painting I did yesterday. And don't scrape against it. Just use your spoon to go over it. Make sure you get in. A lot of it is self-leveling, and this is in a way, but um, you have to really make sure that you get into the corners with this. And this goes a long way. I probably should have gone along the edges. So I'm going to set this down for a minute and just work it up into the edges. Well, I don't know what I did with my glasses. I could probably use them right now to make sure that you get to, into the edges. And you'll see a lot of little tiny bubbles, but like I said, with the heat gun, you can get them all out. I don't know, some resins they say you have to work fast with before it sets up, but this you don't, you don't need to. And I even put more hardener in it than I think I was supposed to, so it still gives you time. But one of the um, things, it's sensitive to temperature and you have to have it between 70 and 80 degrees. And this room is on the same AC as my master bedroom, so sometimes it's a little bit cooler. So. After I'm done, I put a towel under it and I put it in a room that I know is a little bit warmer. I know is at least, uh, we're in Florida, so we have the air conditioning on all the time. Using a spoon, you could use a, a pla I'm using a, pla a disposable plastic spoon, but I, a lot of times I'll use the same one over and over. Um, you could use a spatula. Just make sure you fill it all in. This, I find that this is so thick that I don't think it uh, levels out as easily as maybe some of the thinner resins. The, I think that industrial resin I had went on a lot thinner than this and kind of just went into the corners. This you have to kind of push into the corners, but I've had a lot of good luck with it. spots it looks like it didn't get just trying to make sure I got it down into all the areas okay and then that I'm just going to stick in there and I'm going to change my gloves because I have some sticky resin on my gloves and I don't want to Get it on the heat gun and actually for the heat gun I don't need my gloves so this is a heat gun and I'm putting it on low as far as how hard it blows and um, then here I'm going to increase the temperature to maybe 500 I found out the hotter it is the quicker it gets rid of the bubbles
And like I said, it's not how close she holds it. I think it's just um, it takes a minute or so to do that. It has more to do with just the heat hitting the bubbles. I don't know how well you can see this. I'm going to move this a little closer. I'm not sure if you can even see any of the bubbles, they're real tiny. So it's at 500 degrees now, as soon as the heat hits the bubbles, they go away. They're real teeny tiny. I shut it off and now once it's off you have to transfer your pieces back over so I'm going to start with the, this edge and you may have to move it a little Down a little and you can you have plenty of time to mess with it you don't have to be in any rush I'm not sure if that was even how I had it <laughs> oh I think this might have been on top it's a good idea to wear gloves or you could use a um, toothpick to move it around too yeah I think that was it and this I had here. There. So I'm going to use this to pick this up with this. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's sitting in the resin at all. I might have to put something on it after. And this isn't going to be exact, but I'm going to try to put it how it was. And again, that's tumbled stained glass. I have a large tumbler that can hold up to 40 pounds and I put a bunch of the long stained glass in it. And they didn't break. I was expecting these long ones to break in half, but they never did.
and this doesn't dry right away. And you got to make sure it's level. I'm going to put a little bit of it on there like that to hold that. Because if your table isn't level, they'll actually slide for a while. Next one's a real tiny one. And so the these are all from one necklace that I bought. Oops. These are all going to fit. That's why you have to really <laughs> kind of do it ahead of time on the glass and then So you can use gloves or if your hands start getting sticky, dump a little alcohol into a uh, paper towel and you can wipe your hands off. So on some of them I just leave them like that and on um, like the mermaid, I don't know if you can see the mermaid over there, after I was done putting it all together I uh, mixed a little more resin or had a little more resin left, one of the two and I um, poured some more resin over it and it made them, the flowers real, or the uh, mermaid tail real shiny. Okay. I think I'm just going to keep on doing the flowers and then, um, geez, I have two more flowers to fit in there. And then um, I'll put the green, I have kind of like grass. I'll put that in after. And you have time to move these around if you don't like the way they look. You could pick it up and put it back down, whatever you want to do.
Jeez. I might have to move these all over a little bit. Stuff happens. I think I can fit them both. So this, I must have, I'm gonna have to dip that in resin and go like that so it doesn't cover it all up at the top. Move that over. Actually, maybe I should put this on this side. That on that side. And then go like that. Top. There. We're missing a couple of flowers. Okay, so this is going to go here. And I'll see what I can do with this. I guess it's going to hang over the frame. That's okay. And then I have this little one. I'm sure I can fit in here somehow. Put that in the middle. can put the leaves on whatever ones I can fit I can go like that this this can go like that and then this was the green grass or whatever you want it to be. And just stick it wherever you can fit it. Here's a couple more. Jeez. Done. So you still have time to mess around with it if you don't like the way it looks. This flower looks a little crowded in there. You see the welcome backwards, you probably do. Who knows? But I think it turned out cute. And now we just have to let it set. So I'll show you a couple of these. I made some resin flowers. And you can see on the back how there's bubbles in them. There's uh, some big bubbles in that. In the back where I didn't blow it out or heat it up. 
to get the bubbles out. You can see them there. But when I have extra resin, that's a lot of times what I'll do, I'll add. I bought this uh, coloring for resin. I don't know what the name of it is, color pour. And I've mixed it with the resin, the different colors and made this from silicone. Uh, molds. Trying to see if I have anything. <laughs> I made a mermaid from a silicone mold. And then different flowers and all these you just pour it in and let it dry overnight and the next morning it's they pop right out. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Maybe I'll make another uh, mermaid. I'll just add some sparkles to it. Well, the other thing that I've done in the past is put... Um, this which i have on the mermaid over there around the edges but i might just leave this one like that i probably should have put this flower over on the other side mm, it looks so crowded maybe i'll do that Or maybe I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> oh, well, I hope you enjoyed it. I've been experimenting with this for about two years now. With resin, maybe a year, but with the tumble glass for two years. I started with a small tumbler, got a bigger tumbler, and now have like a 40-pound tumbler, which I can talk about on another video.